Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus again today for episode 4 of 4 on drinking water. So far this series we've talked about when drinking water became a thing and technology to get it to us and regulations and defluoridation and also fluoridation and why it's important. We've also talked about all sorts of different timelines about the regulation and safety in drinking water and what is actually in there and how we filter it. It's been a huge series, I have to say. It's pretty amazing so far. But today we're gonna to talk about if we will ever run out of drinking water. This is a conversation we're having right now as the world gets warmer thanks to global warming and weather gets weirder and ice is melting into the sea. I mean, all of these things are affecting water. So what happens in your body when you get thirsty? Let's make you scared before we explain it. You've probably heard that when you're hungry, you eat a meal, it takes about 20 minutes for you to feel full. Uh, the fullness gap can lead to overeating, which can lead to obesity, but that doesn't really happen when you're thirsty. Quenching thirst, that happens right away, it's immediate. And overwatering, that isn't really something people do by accident, which is interesting, right? Like anything with your body, if you think about it, it has an evolutionary purpose. We get thirsty so that we don't die. It's pretty straightforward. Water is the most important nutrient for basically all life on our planet. It's a huge reason we are able to live and survive here because Earth is roughly 71% water, humans are 60% water, this proportion really matters. Water leaves our body all day and we have to take more in. It leaves by sweating and peeing, you probably already knew that, but it also leaves by breathing and there's a lot of water in your poop and you know, if you go a little, go a little good cry in and get some water out of you that way. But once your water starts to disappear, you need to replace it. You may know this already, but the brain controls your body. Crazy, right? I know. Well, anyway, it does this through electrical impulses. Those electrical impulses run through electrolytes. Electrolytes are sensitive to those electrical impulses. It's a salt, usually, that's in your body cells. And when the electrolyte balance is off, you become dehydrated. It's harder to move. It's harder to think straight. Sometimes it can cause you to lose your sight, and eventually it will kill you. Basically, thirst is the body's response to unbalanced fluid and salt levels in your bloodstream. This causes a thirst response, and basically your brain is saying, your blood is too salty. You need to fix that. So neurons create a thirst response. And just like with food, it takes a little while before the water goes in your mouth, into your stomach, and then distributes out into all your cells. And I know what you're thinking, but Trace, after I drink water, especially cold water, I feel quenched, like right away. And the reason that, that is different from your food response is because researchers at the University of California, San Francisco, just up here, did a study earlier this year and they found an area of the brain called the subfornical organ. It reacts immediately to oral stimulation. Neurons within this thing, funnily enough called the SFO, can actually predict your future fluid levels based on your current blood composition and how much water or food is in your mouth. Cool, right? The problem is with water, drinking too much in a short time can literally kill you. According to the American Chemistry Society, it can take less than two gallons of water to kill a person who weighs 165 pounds. Six liters of water, that's it. So when this part of your brain thinks, oh, you've had enough, they stop firing, you stop feeling thirsty, and it happens right away so that you don't overdrink. Overeating is much more difficult. So that's why that function is completely different. So if this happens to everyone, do we go all Mad Max and like drive around and keep polluting the earth and, you know, playing flamey guitars and stuff? Maybe, but let's talk about it from a more realistic perspective, although it's a great movie. You hear a lot about droughts, especially in the United States if you live in California, and according to the United Nations, 85% of the world lives in the driest half of the planet. That means hundreds of millions of people do not have access to clean drinking water, they do not have water security, and it could get worse, especially again with the global warming that we're experiencing. Think about it, by 2050, the global population is gonna grow by three billion more people. The global water demand is projected to increase by 55%. Along with that, climate change is gonna change weather patterns around the globe, which will make some regions wetter and other regions drier, but that doesn't necessarily mean a global drought because this is a fairly closed system. It just means that water is gonna shift where it will normally fall on the planet. Many regions of the world are already experiencing major droughts, 
not just the country and nation of California, places like Brazil and China, Kenya and Australia. One of the reasons for these droughts is a lack of snowfall. And research published in the journal Environmental Research Letters found that snowpack is actually on decline around the world. Much of the Northern Hemisphere depends on this snowpack for its freshwater. I mentioned earlier, here in San Francisco, we get ours from the Sierras. And it was the lowest ever last year, if I remember correctly. This year we were okay, but this is one of those things where it doesn't matter if you're okay for one year. Because we are so far behind where we should have been, we're gonna have to get record snowfalls for a long time just to catch up to our baseline. When it comes to the Northern Hemisphere and their snowpack as a group, that accounts for nearly two billion people. One of the study's authors said, water managers have to make arrangements at a lot of places for alternatives because the snow reservoir will just no longer exist. And that's freaky. That's freaking people out. But there are other problems way beyond snowfall. As of June of 2015, NASA announced the water table is dropping all over the world. The water table is the level of water under the ground. So if you drill a well, how far down you have to go to get to the water table. Of the 37 largest underground aquifers on Earth where the water is held in the crust, 21 have passed their sustainability tipping point. Basically, we're taking out too much water. As we take out too much, it will never replenish will just eventually dry it out. Those aquifers do not refill very quickly, it can take from 500 to 1300 years to fully refill an aquifer, and we're just sucking them out. So the world might be running out of water. So what do we do? I mean, as Californians, we already have steps uh, in place to help conserve water so that we don't waste it. Things like state mandated water conservation plans. People should use less water. There's also the removing of the stigma of dirty cars and brown lawns, those kind of things, making those a point of pride, saying I have a brown lawn because I care about our water or taking grass out altogether and putting in more regionally specific plants, drought resistant plants. Here in San Francisco and other places that are experiencing drought, you have to ask for water at a restaurant. They don't just bring it to you. Because if you don't drink that water, they just dump it out. They can't reuse it. And it does sound very first world problem-y. And the problem with that is it isn't a first world problem, it's an everybody problem. And if we waste our water, we have to go find it somewhere else. When it comes to food, that's an even bigger problem because much of the world's water goes into the production of food around 70% of our fresh water. So in the event of a global drought, food would become even more scarce. Before the food got scarce, the price of foods would skyrocket. During the food crisis of 2008, the price of rice doubled in just a few short months, and rice is very water intensive. We do have strategies to get us out of trouble. One of those is to look at the major bodies of water on the planet and try and extract what we need from those. Desalination, removing the salt from ocean water. But it's not the best idea. Sorry to focus so much on the state of California, but they are doing this. So as an example, we are next to the ocean. Shouldn't we be able to just pull all of the water out of there? And then we have some salt and we also have some water. Everybody loves sea salt, right? And put all that on your caramels or whatever. San Diego County had the idea of putting in a desalination plant. They're planning on building a super huge one. It'll cost a billion dollars. It'll make 204 million liters of potable water every day and then sell it at a dollar for every 616 liters. It sounds cheap, right? But that's actually not the case at all. One dollar for 616 liters is 80% higher than what San Diego pays for treated water outside of their county. Even though this plant is huge, it can only make 10% of what San Diego actually uses. And it'll use a lot of energy because it's using reverse osmosis. In case you don't remember from earlier, that's forcing pressurized water through a semi-permeable membrane and it separates the salt out so they can go get rid of it or put it on caramels or whatever. Water is an essential part of life across the whole planet for every human every piece of vegetation, every animal, they all need water. Insects need water. Bacteria need water. Water is very important. So if you take away one thing from this episode, turn the faucet off. Remember when we were kids, or I was a kid, and they were telling you to turn the lights off when you leave a room? My mom used to yell at me all the time about it. 
That's because we don't want to waste electricity. Water is the same way. Turn it off when you're not using it. Don't take baths when you could take a shower. Don't run the water just because you're washing your hands or brushing your teeth. Don't run water to make noise while you go to the bathroom because you have a shy bladder. Turn on music. You know, find a different way that doesn't waste a resource that literally everyone in the world has to share. That's just my advice. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of D News Plus. But before you leave, I just want to say thank you because I have an announcement to make. D News Plus is going to go on hiatus. It doesn't mean we're going away forever. We're just going to go on a break for a little while for our sanity. We've done 85 different series in a row. That's like over 350 episodes of D News Plus nonstop, just going, going. So we're going to take a break for a little bit, but hopefully we will come back. It's been 15 months since we launched D News Plus. We were the fastest growing show that we'd ever made. You are the most engaged audience that I have ever gotten to interact with, and I really appreciate it. I love you guys for coming here every week, and I hope that you will stay subscribed, even though we're not gonna be able to make some episodes for a little while. You can tell us your favorite episodes down in the comments. You can tell other people who may come and find D News Plus, maybe what other podcasts they love, or what other series they may have loved from D News Plus so far. Tell us your favorites. You can also come find us on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. You can find me at D News as well. If you want more science stuff, our show at D News on Twitter or youtube.com slash D News does short versions of all of these long versions that we've been doing on D News Plus. But thank you. Thank you so much for being with us on this crazy adventure so far. As my baby Beyonce says, what goes around comes back around. So we'll see you next time on D News Plus. <laughs>